Hi everybody, welcome back to Marie's Kitchen. I'm so glad you're here. Today we are making whole wheat dinner rolls. These rolls are tender and flaky, buttery and light, delicious served with honey and butter or alongside ham and potato salad. Hey doggy, come on in. Hey girl. I recently posted a video for easy dinner rolls on my channel and it quickly became the most popular recipe on my site. And in the comments to that video, I had several requests for a whole wheat version. So that's what we're making today. Thank you so much for requests. I love to hear from y'all. If you've never made bread or dinner rolls, not to worry. I'll walk you through step by step. All right, let's get started. As with my easy dinner rolls, I'm gonna break it down into four simple steps. It's dough, knead, rise, rolls. I know making bread can be a little overwhelming, but if you break it up into those four simple steps, it gets a little easier. To start with the dough, we're going to proof the yeast. And all that means is we're gonna make sure that the yeast is alive and well. <laughs> you don't wanna to go to all this trouble of making bread if your yeast isn't gonna even work. So we take our packet of yeast, or if you don't have a packet, you can certainly use the bulk in the jar. You'll need two and a quarter teaspoon. That's a one quarter ounce or seven grams. And then I like to just pour that into a cup. And I did have some questions on my prior video. Can you use instant yeast uh, if that's all I have? Yes, you can. Don't change anything, just do the same, same process, everything the same. Now we'll take about one tablespoon sugar and then we'll give this a quick stir. Next step is three tablespoons warm water. Okay, I just got some warm water from the tap and I do have a meat thermometer here, which is really useful because you wanna make sure that your water is not too hot. You can just do like a test like this and as long as it feels okay, kind of like a baby's bath water, you should be fine, but you wanna have it between 105 and 115 degrees. Any higher than 115 and you could kill your yeast. So let's see what we have here. We are at 114. That looks good. Now we'll add three tablespoons water to our yeast and sugar mixture. And then we're gonna give that a stir. And one thing I've been using to stir lately is this uh, chopstick. I find it's really great and doesn't make a lot of loud clinking noises when you're stirring. Now we'll set this aside and as long as the yeast is alive, it's going to foam. It'll start to separate and you'll see a big layer of foam and that just means that your yeast is alive and we can use it in the dough and it will do the work we want it to do. So I'm gonna set this aside about five minutes and let it proof. For these rolls, we are gonna use my stand mixer to do the kneading, which is the, the heavy lifting. If you wanna see dinner rolls made by hand, you can hop over to my easy dinner rolls. There I show you how to knead by hand. It's really the same, it's just a matter of the machines doing the hard work in this case. So we'll take our two cups of whole wheat flour, that's 280 grams, and pour that into a bowl. Next is one and a half cups white flour, or 210 grams. Now we'll add one and a half teaspoons kosher salt or nine grams. I am trying to include metric in all my recipes now as I've received several requests for that as well. Okay, we're just gonna give this a stir to make sure the salt's mixed up with the flour and both flours are mixed together nicely. All right, looks good. Now we can kind of make a well in the flour there, which is just what it sounds like, just kind of a hole in the middle. Let me see if I can show you in there. So you just make sort of a, a well there, a little place to put your liquid ingredients. And now we'll set that aside. Next step is time for the liquid. For that, we're going to use one cup of milk and six tablespoons unsalted butter. Just cut this into some about tablespoon size. and then pop that in with the milk. Now I'm gonna put this in the microwave for about a minute, depending on your microwave, maybe a minute, maybe two, but you just want to melt the butter and warm the milk. You don't need to bring it to a boil, just kind of warm everything up. The warm liquid added to the yeast is gonna help it rise. If I seem a little distracted, it's only because my um, live studio audience is currently sleeping. And she snores a little bit and I can hear it over here. So I just hear 
<laughs> snoring while I'm uh, trying to focus. Okay, now here is our warm milk and partially melted butter. Next, at this point, we would usually add our egg, one egg whisked, and that's what I usually use in dinner rolls, but I did have several requests in my last video for an option to not use an egg, so that's what we're gonna do in this video. Either way works just as well, so you can use one egg just whisked and throw it in there, or if you'd rather not use an egg, what we're gonna use today is one quarter cup sour cream, which is a great substitute for egg. And this is about 55 grams. And I'm just gonna put that in with our warm milk and butter there to kind of let that soften and kind of dissolve into the milk. Next, we're gonna use honey. And of course, you can use another sugar if you like. In my easy dinner rolls, I use traditional white sugar, but I thought, well, with the wheat, why don't we do kind of a honey whole wheat? And we're gonna use a quarter cup of honey. And again, this is completely to your preference. You can use more or less. Now I'll just give this a stir with my spatula to just kind of stir in the sour cream and the honey. Mmm. My gosh, it smells so good. Now we'll pour that into the well and the dry ingredients. It's okay if it's not completely dissolved. This recipe is very forgiving, surprisingly. And now we can see our yeast has separated. You can see it, the foam up here, so we know it is alive. And we're gonna add that in with our liquid, the milk, the honey, the sour cream, the butter. Just pour your yeast mixture right in. Now I'll just take my spatula and kind of start to stir everything. You'll wanna kind of bring it into a dough. Scrape the bottom so you get the flour off the bottom and mix that in. I did have some people ask, could they use self-rising flour? I'm just thinking of these questions um, <laughs> as I'm stirring. But I had some people ask about using self-rising flour. And the problem with that is self-rising flour has about one and a quarter teaspoon baking powder per cup of flour. It also has one half teaspoon salt per cup of flour. This recipe doesn't have baking powder in it. So it is going to be a different recipe if you're using what would amount to probably, you know, almost at least three or four teaspoons of baking powder. It will also throw off the flavor. Baking powder has a very um, almost metallic flavor when you get a lot of it or when it's not supposed to be there. So I do not recommend using self-rising flour. All right, now we're going to use the dough hook of the stand mixer and just pop that on and we're gonna knead this for about five minutes until it's nice and smooth. If it's very, very sticky, then you'll want to add a little flour. But the goal is to add as little flour as possible. This is a wet dough and we wanna keep it nice and tender. If you keep adding more flour, it's gonna get a little bit tougher. So if you can avoid adding flour, that's great, but if it gets really, really sticky, stuck up on the sides, then add a little flour and it'll start to come together. Now, if you're kneading with your hands, you will need a little more flour to work with it because it is very sticky. Dust a little flour on the counter, put some flour on your hands and knead it that way. All right, let's go ahead and start kneading here. It is a little sticky here, so I'm just gonna scrape down the sides. I am gonna dust with a little flour, just a little pinch, and see how that helps. As long as it comes together in a ball of dough and not just a sticky mass that's sticking to the sides, you're on the right track. All right, this looks good. Take a look at what we've got. We have a nice, smooth ball of dough here. It's not as sticky as when we started and it's in this kind of nice, smooth consistency. So cute. Now what we'll do is take a clean bowl and we're going to just drizzle some olive oil down the side. And then we'll put the bread dough down in the olive oil, give it a twist and then flip it over and then kind of use your hands to shape it into a ball, kind of a round sort of, uh, I don't know, mushroom cap type thing. <laughs> now we'll take some cling wrap and cover this. 
and then you'll need to put this in a warm spot and let it rise one to two hours. Two hours is a little safer. After one, it's not usually fully risen. So what you want it to do is double in size and don't worry too much about exactly if it's doubled or not, but you, it'll be kind of just right up towards the top. If you're having issues and it's not rising, it's probably not in a warm enough spot. So find some sun or even near a light. The light can provide some warmth or near the stove or near the oven if you have that on. You don't want it too hot. Again, it, you don't want it to like start baking the bread, but you need just a warm environment for it to rise. We'll do that now. So I did make one earlier, so we would have it ready to go. You can see the dough has risen. It has truly risen. <laughs> and now we're gonna just take the plastic off and punch this down. If you have kids around, they love to do this. Just punch it right down like that. And then we'll just bring it together into a ball. So we've done the dough, the knead, then we let it rise. And now we're gonna cut it into rolls. And the easiest way to do that, rather than try to pick off 16 equal pieces, what I like to do, let me show you. Wipe my hands a little because oily hands and a sharp knife are not a good combination. So what we'll do is just cut down the middle of our ball of dough here like that. And now we have two approximately equal pieces. And then we'll cut that in half. And then we'll cut each of those pieces in half. You just keep cutting in half and half and half until you have 16 equal pieces. So it's very easy. They're not exact, of course, but who cares about exact? Nobody's gonna be like measuring your rolls at the dinner table. <laughs> They're gonna be eating them, <laughs> so don't worry about it. Um, then we'll go down the middle of this one and then down the middle again. So now we've got eight pieces and I have made homemade hamburger buns using this recipe with this size of rolls. So you could go ahead and make these into rolls and all you would do is just kind of shape them into a ball like this. And I'm gonna do that for each one here real quick. Okay, so now you could make these as larger bun type rolls, or if you wanna make them into smaller dinner rolls, which is what I do usually, is you're gonna start cutting these rolls in half. So just cut it in half again, and in half again. All right, there we go. We have 16 about equal pieces. Now we'll grab a either baking sheet or baking dish. I'm gonna line the baking sheet with parchment paper. You don't need to if you're using um, like a baking pan, a Pyrex. And then all you're gonna do is form these into little balls. And I kind of do it like a mushroom. I kind of squeeze the end together like this, give it a little twist and there's your ball of dough. And then we just set those in about four rows of four. So 16 rolls total. And I did have several uh, people ask if they could have this recipe. And although I have not tried it, I did have someone comment that they did have it and it worked really well. They just used half the egg in the recipe and half the egg um, for the egg wash on top. So if you do wanna have the recipe, you can. And of course, if you leave out the egg, you could just do half the sour cream. Just have all the ingredients or you can always make the full recipe and you know, freeze some after baking. I have all the make ahead options on my website, mariesaba.com. You can hop over there for the full printed recipe and also I include all the options for make ahead. So we're just setting these next to each other. They're kind of barely touching. They're gonna rise for another hour and so they will be touching once they rise and expand that second time, which is great because then when after they bake and then you go to pull them apart, they have all those flakes in between them and they're so good. Mm -hmm. 
If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It means so much to me and also lets me know what kind of content you guys wanna see. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Also leave me a comment and let me know, are you gonna try to make these? Have you tried them? If you have any other requests, leave me a comment and let me know. I love to hear from y'all. Dinner rolls are just such a great thing to bring if you're going to a potluck or someone's house for dinner. And of course we love them at home. My kids love them. You can make them into little sliders with burgers or make them into sandwiches and they just taste so good when they're homemade. All right, so there are our 16 little rolls. I'm gonna take a clean dish towel and lay that over the rolls. And a dish towel really is better than cling wrap in this case. I think I did use cling wrap in my last video and I've realized that dish, dish towel is better because it, when these rise, it, when you pull the plastic off, it can um, deflate the, the little balls once they've risen. So better to use a dish towel if you have it. Now again, we're gonna set this in a warm place and let it rise for about an hour. Okay, it's been about an hour and the rolls have risen. They have truly risen. <laughs> so now it's time to bake the rolls and I have the oven preheating to 375 degrees. And I do wanna mention real quick, a really, really great tool to have is an oven thermometer. If you don't have one, these can just hang or sit in your oven and then you set your oven to 375 and then when you go to check the temperature on the oven when your oven says, okay, it's preheated at 375, check what the reading is on the oven thermometer and make sure it matches up. Cause sometimes it'll say preheated at 375 and the oven thermometer says, oh no, it's actually only 325 in here. Or it'll say it's preheated at 375 and the oven thermometer will tell you it's actually 400 degrees in the oven. So ovens are very, very often miscalibrated and so if you're having trouble with baking, if you're burning or if you're getting doughy, you know, results, get an oven thermometer and just have that in there just to double check. It is, is such a helpful, helpful tool. Now for the rolls, for a nice golden glossy finish, we're gonna add an egg wash. And if you don't wanna use the egg, you could use melted butter. That's also wonderful. I prefer the egg. I feel like it's a little bit shinier. Then add two teaspoons water and give that a quick whisk. Now I really don't like all the gooey bits of the egg in the egg wash. I feel like it just kind of gets everywhere. So I strain my egg wash. It's real simple, just like this. You just run it through a strainer. And then you have this really nice, clear egg wash that you can just spread on the rolls. We'll use a little pastry brush and I'll put a link in the description box if you don't have one of these. They're so nice to have. They're one of my favorite tools. I feel like I'm in art class or painting with my kids. And you can see my rolls are kind of these kind of turned into different sizes, different shapes. It doesn't matter. <laughs> They're gonna taste great. And we're really, we're just not going for perfection here. That's not what baking is about, at least in my kitchen. All right, now these go in the oven at 375 degrees for about 18 to 20 minutes. I think the oven is almost done. If you haven't yet, be sure to give us a thumbs up on this video and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. I've got lots more videos coming up with easy recipes just like this. I don't want you to miss any of them. All right, let's grab the rolls. Oh my gosh, so good. Look how gorgeous these are. Oh, they're so beautiful, golden and kind of shiny. They look so good. I'm gonna let these cool for just a few minutes and then we'll get to try one. For this recipe and more, head over to my website, mariesaba.com. There you can go and print out this recipe and all my recipes. And if you like, put them in a notebook and make your very own Marie's Kitchen cookbook for free. 
My goal is to give you some really easy recipes that turn out great every time so you can build some confidence in the kitchen and feel really inspired to share good food with people that you love. From my kitchen to yours, thank you. And I will put a link to the mitts in the uh, description box if you wanna get some. This looks delicious. Oh man, look how they just pull apart. Oh, steamy, steamy. Oh, so good. You see that up close? I mean, homemade rolls. There's just nothing like them. Pinch off a piece here, so hot. Mmm, so good. Best flavor, just a hint of sweetness. Mmm. I love this sour cream. I think I might like it even more than the egg. Mmm. These are so soft and tender. Yum.